Welcome to Watch and Learn. Today, we're gonna work on the quilt along. I'm Kim Sandberg, and today I've got Christina Whitney and Denise Dowdra. The studio educators are here with you today, and we're here to talk about the surprise quilt along. How's it going, everybody? It's a, it's a surprise. It's coming along. <laughs> so this is actually our first check-in. We're we're filming here. So let's talk about piecing. This uh, <laughs> this one's been kind of fun piecing, hasn't it? So I think the number one thing, and we. On the last uh, quilt along we did, we told ourselves we were going to do something without half square triangles this time, and <laughs> we still ended up doing half square triangles. Surprise! So, <laughs> how did you two handle half square triangles on this one? I did something different. Did you do something different? I did. I followed the pattern. <laughs> I did too! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I followed the pattern and I did it just like the pattern yeah. stated. So, I actually have a nice little stack here of my half square triangles. I actually did all of those first um, mm -hmm. in both the colorways I was doing. I think there was like a million of them, something uh -huh. like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but I did those according to the pattern exactly. Um, I wanted to try a different technique and I thought, you know, I've learned on other <laughs> patterns, we should read the pattern, so I did. <laughs> so, and I, I successfully that. made them and got those done before I started any of the other piecing. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I, I did the same thing, but Christina, I you usually tend to do something different. Directions. <laughs> so, how did you handle your half square triangles? You guys know I hate doing my half square triangles know, two at a time. I know. So, I I actually made this out of some fat quarters, mm -hmm. and so I decided to do a different technique. Um, I did the four inch blocks mm -hmm. instead of I think the pattern said like two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a quarter. Two and two. three quarter. Two. I don't know what it said to cut it to because I didn't do it. Anyway, I cut my blocks quarters. to four inch squares mm -hmm. and then I put them right side together. I did the stitching around the outside of those four inch squares uh -huh. and then I cut them in half diagonally, uh -huh. pressed them open and then trimmed my half square triangles down. So I had very minimal trimming, trimming to do, very minimal mm -hmm. waste, you could say, mm -hmm. doggy bed stuffers. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what I did with my half square triangles and then I did sort of follow the instructions. You sort of follow the instructions. Sort of. <laughs> I like that. I, I do know, and Denise, you probably ran into this too, following the pattern, there was a lot of trimming I did involved. trim a lot. Yeah, I, I have a lot of, kind of, of surprised doggy much. bed material. Yes, There was too. quite a bit. <laughs> but but it did come out nice and they were very mm -hmm. easy to, to square up and I didn't have to worry about, uh-oh, that side's a little scant. Like there was yeah. plenty of Plenty of room. I was well within my comfort zone with the trimming. Which is which is good, yeah. So the next step was actually uh, like putting together the block. We pieced those and then we did that. So Denise, mm -hmm. I know you've got I, kind of, uh, you, I you have still a little haven't trick. finished quite piecing no, yours. <laughs> but but I have a plan now and now I can piece one in about 11 minutes. Awesome. It's pretty quick. So I actually take a minute and just lay out my little half square triangles that I actually took the time to piece first, so I lay these ones out. Just have to remember which way they go, which is yeah, which half color the makes battle. The bow. <laughs> oh, um, see, I'm upside down already. So I took a minute to just lay it all out so I wouldn't I be, I I'm still backwards. <laughs> it was right the first time. So I took the time so I didn't have to do this and fuss with it while I was trying to piece it. Okay, you once you've turned it 18 times, that's right. So I got all my that little pieces together. <laughs> And then I laid out my extra little um, little strips Your little here. Ribbons. So I had everything cut out. Okay. Um, half square triangles pieced, everything cut out, had a little plan, and I laid out every single block that I've pieced this way. That one doesn't want to separate. Who cares? We'll deal with Actually, that later. You cut yours from the 10 inch squares, right? I so did. every block was different. I did. So I had to be really careful. Um, mistakes were made. There was some going back and repiecing some blocks here and there because I'm like, uh oh. Um, so that's when I actually, uh, I'll admit, I read the instructions many times mm. because there were times where it's like, I don't need to do it that way. But I found following the instructions was very helpful. And then just taking a minute to lay it all out this way mm -hmm. gave me the opportunity to just jump into some chain piecing without having to think about which section's next. Okay. So I actually started by chain piecing all of these little units mm -hmm. and together. I just laid those together uh -huh. and pushed them all through the machine one after another. So did all four of those. 
Then I came back and I just quickly finger pressed these open, grabbed the next section and did those ones did together. Those ones. So then that was fast. Then I started adding on these little pieces here in the center, mm -hmm. sort of adding these to the blocks, building those. And then I came back and started adding this, um, this piece actually I did a little differently. I chain pieced that, mm -hmm. and then I came back and added this piece. I had a really nice rhythm during it, so I did not have to cut thread at all until nice. I was done with the block. And I would end by starting the next block and getting the next little unit down underneath. So it just kept it going, no cutting the bobbin thread, just kept pushing. Like I said, I timed it out 11 minutes. Look at you. So I still have a few more to do. I've done all my gold ones, but uh -huh. I have um, about half the white ones left to do here. So my two different colorways that I'm doing on a cute little Christmas quilt. So I'm excited to see it coming together. Yeah, this is, uh, I know the one thing I ran into if you don't mind me using. No. I pieced all of my units like this, and part of them are supposed to be flipped like this. Mm -hmm. So I had to unpick half of them. Um, I did four that way. Luckily, I only made like <laughs> 10 blocks, so yeah. it wasn't that many, yeah. but yeah. I did four that way, and then I also, I was stacking and working four at a time when mm -hmm. I was cutting, so I miscut four all uh, at a time, and I had to go back and sew this piece together ah, on some of mine. Gotcha. But, but surprise, that's right in the name of the quilt. So exactly. fortunately, I know how to press. So I pieced it and pressed it really flat and you can't tell now. So you made it go. It, it's all coming together. I like it. And I, I really f follow the same process, but I'm sure Christina did something different. Did you? Actually, assembling I, the block. Assembling the block, I did pretty close to what Denise did. Okay. I have a little ironing mat that mm -hmm. I keep and I put it on my, lap mm -hmm. with all the pieces set out for that entire block and then I just start chaining them together and I've already got the ironing mat there so I have my little iron next to me and I just can press them as I need to or finger press them and so yeah once you've got all the pieces cut out they go together yeah. real quickly. They definitely do. I agree. 11 minutes. Yes prep work minutes. is the key on this yeah. one. Makes Especially a big when difference. You only have Five to do. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I did. I was only going to do five, but then I ended up. I ended up doing a few more, and I'll, I'll see. So what I'm I end up doing am I these. the only one doing the whole thirty blocks, uh -huh. the whole mm -hmm. size? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. I don't feel so bad that mine are not all pieced then. Yeah. Um, no, you've done a lot more than we have. <laughs> done a lot more. <laughs> okay. So talking talking about that. So the layout. So you are doing the entire quilt, just like the quilt I behind am. us here. Yep. Just a little bit different colorway. I actually. Mm -hmm pulled in some drama and I'm using black snowflake fabric mm. as my background. So that's why you see that little bit of black in there. So it's just like that. just a little pop of drama. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, the quote behind us uh, is one that Jen Eskridge made for us. It's gorgeous. She did it with a lot of fun. Uh, she actually used vintage fabrics on this. So sorry, we can't tell you where the fabrics are from, but we know where the pattern's from. Yes, we do. <laughs> you, if you're still interested in picking up this pattern, you can go to handyquilter.com and search the surprise um, quilt pattern and you can pick it up for, I think it's like $5 online. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, layouts, uh, as we just mentioned, Christina and I are definitely doing smaller. I'm actually doing a table runner, so I think I'm just gonna make mine five long. And like I mentioned, I've got a few left over. I, I don't know, maybe I'll end up doing some table mats or something. I don't know. Oh, we'll, that would be fun. We'll see, we'll see what happens. But I know Christina is doing something really <laughs> special <laughs> and different this time. So what kind of a layout are you working on for yours? Well, mine has five blocks. Mm -hmm. So here's a diagram what it's gonna be like, you know, okay. my fancy graph paper. I love it. Um, so I'm, I'm actually gonna do something a little bit different with mine. Um, I took my five blocks mm -hmm. and I loaded some water soluble interfacing, okay. stabilizer, stabilizer, whatever you want to call yeah. it, onto my long arm as my backing. Okay. Then I put some batting down and then I put each of the blocks on top of there. Oh. And I just stitched that down. Okay. Just to give it some definition. Uh -huh. And then after that, um, I took it off, cut them um, to the size of the block, mm -hmm. threw them in the bucket of water to dissolve that okay. stabilizer. Yeah. And now I've got some blocks that are already quilted with batting on them. Oh. And oh. I'm going to not say anything else about that till the next reveal. So that will be my surprise for next time. Okay, awesome. So Christina is definitely doing something mm. different than you or I. Yes, that, I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued. So, okay, 
Well, be sure and tune in next time. I think next month, towards the end of the month, we'll be doing another check-in on the quilt along. Um, our next check-in is actually going to be talking about how we're quilting our projects. So Christina's already got a little bit of a, a jump start here. <laughs> She's doing a little bit of quilting. Um, in the meantime, be sure to use hashtag handy quilter on any post that you do. And for this quilt along, be sure to use um, hashtag handy quilter QAL. And we'll be looking for those. So be sure and use that hashtag. If you're using the hashtag handy quilter, you will have an opportunity to have one of your quilts featured at the end of our videos. So be sure to stick around to see those. And in the meantime, give us a like and subscribe and have fun quilting.